All right, so the node that you've created over here, um, let's select this over here, and as you can see, you have a name, and that name we will change into uh, stair. So this is the placeholder, this is the object that we're going to change into a stair. Now double click on it, and as you can see, if you double click, you go inside of the stair node. Right here we see a file import node by default. So by default if you create a geometry node, it adds an extra node inside which allows you to load in a file. Now select this node and just press delete. The thing that we're going to do is we're gonna make or we're gonna create we're gonna create inside of uh, this placeholder this geometry placeholder, we're gonna create a box. Now there are several ways how we can do this. First of all, I'll show you by pressing tab or by going over here to, uh, where is it, primitive? You see over here you have a whole set of primitives. These are objects that you can create. A box, a circle, a control, which is like uh, some kind of an axis shape and some other control shapes, curve file, etc. So take the box and drag it inside. And as you can see, you see the box appearing. Now there's also another way that you can do, is you can go over the 3D viewport, press tab over here, and create a box by just typing B O and we're still at the wrong spot, I see, because we're not inside of this node. Let's do it again, press tab, okay, B, O, X, box, yeah, I think I was correct after all. So you can press box over here, and now you can place the box object. But something happens which I don't like now. Uh, the problem is the following. As you can see, underneath the scene, we have suddenly two objects. We have the stair and we have created a box object. And in that box object we see this box node. So it has created outside of this node a new box object. And that was not uh, that was not the idea. That's not what we wanted to do. That is something that you find over here. So this says tool options. Create at object level. So each tool that you create now in the viewport or by using over here these shortcuts is creating an object at object level. Now we want to change this to create it within context. And as you can see, the symbol changes over here, so I'm going to delete this node, go to the stair again, and now we can create over here, again by doing tab, B, O, X, and if we place a box right now, now you see the box node has been created directly within our object. We don't have two geometry nodes anymore, just one node, and within that one node we see this box. Now there's also another method that I've shown you before, is over here, by pressing box over here, you can set a box right now, or you can also press by holding control, left mouse button on the box, and then it suddenly creates it immediately in the center. So you have two ways, you have an interactive way of placing it, by just pushing with left mouse button, or you have the direct uh, method of placement by pressing control left mouse button on this uh, symbol. This is something which works for all of the things you see over here. Okay, uh, so now that we have this box, make sure that you have all these things set at these values. Now, what do we have? We have a node, and this node, as I can say, it can be changed which direction, so it might be that in your case it's all sitting on top. Each node has its own set of parameters. So 
these are all kinds of control values that you can use to change the properties over here of this object. So for example, if you have the size over here, I can change the size by typing in another number, let's say 5. And as you can see, it makes like one bigger object. And you have x, y, and z. So this is for all those things exactly the same. You have also the center, which is default for most of the primitives. So where is this object going to be placed? So it could be like a value of 8. Now remember, this is creation of geometry. This means that if you go to the object itself over here, it still has all it still has its axis over here right at the zero value okay so now go in I'm gonna put this back let's say to zero now what you can do as well uh, well it's activated over here what you can do as well you can also manipulate these values over here on screen by activating what you have now if you want to activate those controls you press enter and then you will see this uh, symbol appearing so let's do this again having the box press enter okay um, now if we check this uh, you have to turn around by using the spacebar right now this is an operator which we uh, or this is a controller we, with which we can do a lot of things for example the center you can use to move in all kinds of directions it works also the same as in Maya that if you press control on one of the axes that you see that you have like a control allowing you to move into two directions okay um, what you see over here is for scaling if you take the top part it scales everything it's like the global scale if you take one of these bars it's like a two-dimensional scale and if you take one of these inner lines then it's just a one-dimensional scale so like that you have very good control over it now you can change all this by pressing the Y button so Y is for switching around all the possible parameters so over here now I have transform and over here I have the scale now the reason for that that uh, uh, that I have only two is because it's not really transform node so you can control the center you can control the size but it says nothing about orientation this is something I will show you immediately after alright um, what we're going to do now we have all these values uh, a little bit uh, mixed up what we're going to do now is set all these values back to their defaults now you can do this by going over here on the text parts and pressing the right mouse button now if you do this then you get like a whole list of all kinds of things that you can do now over here you see revert to defaults and I'll press this so do the same for over here refer to defaults so like that you have a little bit control over all these things um, now a last way so we've seen how we can type it in num numerically we've seen also how we can control this with handles and we've seen how we can reset all the values now there's also another way that you can change the values over here is by going to each one of these blocks or either to this one doesn't matter so over here you have specifically control for each one of those over here you have global control if you press the middle mouse button you get some kind of a slider system and going up you can control how precise that you want to control the values so if I stay over here then I'm controlling the values by a point one value so if I start moving to the side as you can see like that I can control these values now as I told you you can do it also over here and then you see I'm controlling all three values at the same time this is how you can control the things as well so again 
revert to defaults. Alright, now since I have this box, I want to do for example something uh, not special with it, but I want to rotate it. So what you can do over here is you can use tap and take a transform node. So T R transform transform. Now how to find all those things? Well you can find the tools that you need by looking at what kind of a group they're in and they have their logical grouping. For example, if you want to transform, if you want to deform something, you can look at this. Has it something to do with attributes? Well, I have to explain this, what they are. But no, they don't have anything to do with attributes, nor with characters, nothing with clothing, nothing with digital assets, nothing with edge, nothing with fluid, hair, managers, manipulate, manipulate, that seems to be coming close. So manipulate is the manipulation of all the points, the vertices, whatever. And so over here you find all kinds of different tools how to manipulate. So let's go and see if we can find what we need. Transform. So this is the node that we need. So drag it in over here. Okay. Now uh, I was showing you by pressing the Y button over here that you can jump around all the controls and right now you see we have three different controls so we have the move axis we have the rotate axis and we have the scale axis so these are the three controls that you have and so right now we can change each one of those changing these values all right now uh, let's go back to the box because there are some more things that I wanted to show you. Uh, right now it's just a simple polygon box. Now imagine if you want to have like different types of uh, boxes. You can choose them over here. So it's right here that you change all these values. For example I can change it into a polygon mesh in which I can choose how many subdivisions that I want to have for the whole thing in one go. Okay. Um, revert to defaults. Uh, what what else do I have? You have also the option to go immediately to NURBS. So unlike in Maya in which you ha have to create like a totally different object, uh, in Houdini it's one node which has the ability to change in what type it actually is. So this is something you can control. Okay, um, now we're going to leave this uh, as it is, um, but what I'm going to change is the size and dimensions of the whole thing. So we're going to change this over here, and what we're going to do, we're going to make we're going to make uh, a step for our stairs. So right here, I'm going to scale down in Y, and I'm also going to scale down in Z, something like this and perhaps even more in Y like this so this is going to be our very first step now the transform we don't need it uh, at this moment so I'm just going to select this node and I'm going to delete it again alright so this is uh, creating a very simple object and how to work a little bit manipulating all uh, the, the values that you have over here. So what you've learned is how to use these controls, how to use and play with these values, how to use uh, the, the names in itself of the channel, what you can uh, select with them, and uh, how to change uh, several other kinds of properties of such an object. So the next step what we're going to do is we're going to prepare a control line uh, that we're going to use and that control line is something that we're going to use to copy our steps upon and this is one of the most important things for creating our stairs.